Hi, I'm Mark Allen, the publisher of New World Library. We're very pleased to be the publisher of the best book I've ever read in my life called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. We've sold over four million copies now in English and it's in many, many foreign editions as well. We're very pleased now to offer you this short preview from Eckhart TV where he offers live stream teachings monthly. His spoken word is as powerful and magical as his written word. So enjoy this little offering. I was watching a, a talk with you and Neil Donna Walsh, and, and he said, um, you know, we both wrote great books, but the difference between him and you was that you live it. Um, and so first, I just got to thank you for being such an example uh, for, for something that's truly missing in, in most of the world. Um, but but my, my question is, uh, what's, what's a day like in the life of Eckert? Um, <laughs> it's, it sounds like a bad reality TV show, but yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, not, uh, it's not terribly interesting. <laughs> it's very ordinary. Unless when, when I'm traveling, it gets a bit more interesting because there's a plane to catch and there's a hotel and, and so on. But when I'm not traveling, uh, it's extremely ordinary. Um, the, I love being, so there's always set aside time for just being still or walking in nature. And uh, I'm notorious for not meeting deadlines. And <laughs> everybody knows when they say, there's a dead, this needs to be done, this, this thing needs to be done by so and so. Well, we'll see. <laughs> and, uh, I love night times, so I sometimes don't go to bed until 1.30 or 2 and sleep about five hours. And um, I like little things, going to a cafe, have a, a coffee somewhere. Nature, as I said, love walking in nature, reading occasionally being, doing whatever needs to be done. People call, there's always things that need to be done. I do them quietly. Some things don't get done at all and then they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Easier for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> are, are you still able to go out in public though? And what? Still able to go out in public? Well, and, that is uh, interesting. It's, I go out usually with a baseball cap, which I, I never really liked, but I've been wearing them for years now. And the, because I love privacy, I love uh, to be invisible, I love to be in a room and being able to just observe what goes on in the room without anybody being aware that I'm there. That's more difficult now. So often people come up even with a baseball cap, they they come up and, and usually it's lovely. There's they say some that it's been so wonderful. My life has changed. It happens almost every day, um, and that's wonderful. I I prefer not to be recognized, but the moment it happens, I'm happy and I respond and it's there's a loving interaction. But my preference is not to be seen. Uh, I'm an introvert by nature, so even to go out and give talks was a very strange thing for me. I knew that this is what the universe wanted me to do, or the universe acting through me. So it's, it's things one surrenders into things and then they're fine. It's not my nature to go out and sit on stage and talk. Uh, and uh, so, Every situation brings its own challenges. The loss of privacy and so on is, could be seen as a challenge and requires then surrender to see in this world there are polarities. You gain something here, you lose something there. In the world of polarities on the surface, or on the surface level, you experience polarities. The gain here has to be paid for something. So the fact that the teaching has gone out to so many people that's wonderful, of course, then, yes, privacy is lost, 
that need to accept that. Uh, before I had privacy, but very few people were reached by the teaching. <laughs> well, I did workshops in the in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, I, I, there was one evening talk in England that had been scheduled. Nobody turned up. <laughs> so I was alone. I just sat there. <laughs> but I had my privacy. And, And then I had a workshop one schedule. Usually I had about seven, 10, 12, 15 people for little workshops. Or One workshop had been, somebody had organized a workshop for me and I arrived for a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. One person turned up waiting at the door and said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> So not that many people were reached, but I was wonderful privacy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that's how it is. It's um, uh, simple. I don't live in, in an ashram uh, where uh, some spiritual teachers live in an ashrams where they're surrounded by by people who go, <laughs> and that can be, of course comforting for a while to the ego, if you still have an ego, hopefully not to the spiritual teacher. But uh, it's not good. It's, I prefer to be in every normal, everyday life and uh, go to the supermarket and so on. It's, it's, so it's not interesting, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and not, not even glamorous, except occasionally when I visit Oprah, then suddenly, it's, ah, <laughs> driving into the big, the gates open to the big mansion, and you drive in, shh, oh. oh. <laughs> but otherwise, not that much glamour. 